This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. The views expressed by guests on this program do not necessarily represent the views of the host or owners of the Doggy Diva Show and do not necessarily constitute endorsement of products. Medical information discussed by guests on this program are those of the guests and is only for informational purposes and should not replace medical advice by your local veterinarian professional. Hi, this is Susan Marie. This week on the Doggy Diva Show, celebrate Labor Day safely with you and your pets and how pets play an interesting role in a popular mystery series. Also, celebrating working dogs on Labor Day. That's what's on our show this week. Let's get started. Hey, did you hear that? What is that? It's the bark heard round the world. The Doggy Diva Show. Here's Susan Marie. Welcome to the Doggy Diva Show, the show for animal lovers. I'm your host, Susan Marie, and as always, I'm joined by my canine co-hosts, the Doggy Divas themselves, Francesca, Coco, and our newest little diva, Miss Olive. Miss Olive is the cute little Italian greyhound rescue in the picture with the microphone. Thank you for joining us today as we bring the experts in the pet and animal world right to you. So go grab a cup of coffee and your pet's favorite treat, and we'll be back in just a moment. It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Your pets will stay warm for the winter and be runway ready. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com Hey, Monica. Now, this is a very special weekend because this is a weekend when everybody celebrates. There's barbecues. It's the end of summer. It's Labor Day. So, have some tips for us on how to do this safely? Absolutely. Labor Day, of course, one of my favorite holidays of the year because you get the three-day weekends that we all so love and enjoy. Um, and at my house, we love to be outside. It is. It's the end of summer. The kids just went back to school. We love just having a day where we can, you know, an extra day where there's no school, no work. We get to relax and kind of enjoy ourselves. And what better way to do that than celebrating with friends or, you know, enjoying the day outside. And we love love having our pets enjoy it with us but we always just tend to be a little cautious so just a couple tips if you are boating or going to the beach um anything in that nature you know always be cautious about having you know a good enough water supply for your pets because it does get warm out making sure you're cautious about the key times of the day as far as heat It can get very hot, especially in that, you know, two, three o'clock time frame. So maybe, you know, venturing out more in the mornings or afternoons or making sure that you definitely bring some shade for your pet to enjoy so they have a place to cool down. Um, Another thing to be cautious of if we are, you know, boating or going to the beach um, or even in our pools is water intake. That is salt water, chlorine water. Um, you can definitely have some GI issues if your pet, you know, gets really thirsty and tired and they start lapping up water and a lot of it from the pools or from the oceans. Um, you can get some GI upsets that way. So making sure even if your pet is in a pool and you're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, he's, he's, In water, you know, he's good to go. Always have fresh water right there, you know, at the pool edge or something. So try to tend them. If you see them drinking out of the pool a lot or drinking out of the ocean, trying to get them to, you know, kind of revert over to the water bowl and 
simply use, you know, the salt water, the chlorine water just to cool their bodies down in. That way you can avoid some GI upsets that can come with that sometimes. Another thing is food. Barbecuing is a huge deal. Um, so making sure we have some pet safe snacks for our pets, especially if you have friends and family over. You don't want to um, have the upset stomach issues afterwards if your pets tend to like to be fed things or you have a friend over that may not be aware, you know, that pets, you know, shouldn't have certain foods. So always be, you know, prepared as far as our, you know, meat bones, rib bones, steak bones, um, pork products, all those things can really upset our pet stomach. So have some great pet friendly snacks available. That way, if your guests want to treat your pets, then they have something right there. Your pets are loving the attention. They're loving the snacks, but then they can enjoy the day because nobody wants to go back to work Tuesday and end up with a pet that needs to uh, be seen or a mess that needs to be cleaned. And of course, you know, be cautious if people are going in and out of the houses. Um, you do not want, you know, the pet to accidentally escape or to become fearful and try to flee with loud noises. Um, so just, you know, be cautious of the surroundings, be cautious with the trash overflow. If it's like my house, I always tend to have, you know, tons of extra garbage after we entertain and have people over because you're cooking more and you have more people in the house. And if the garbage cans become full, making sure that, you know, the bags are kept somewhere out of reach to where your dog's not going out to use the restroom and being able to, you know, rip into a bag quickly or smelling something or digging into the trash, especially with some of our baked goods, things of that nature. Um, we worry about toxic issues with our baked goods as they start to spoil. Um, a lot of the molds that come from our flour and our yeast products and our baked goods can be very toxic to our pets when they get into the spoiling stages. So just be very cautious about your trash, making sure, and then of course they can get into bones in there, things of that nature. So just kind of be vigilant, try to include the pets, have a location to where if they are tired, they can, you know, go get away from things, have a quiet spot for them that they can always retreat to and have a wonderful, wonderful three day weekend. Thank you, Monica. These are great tips and great for celebrating because we want to celebrate with our pets, but we want to do it safely. So thank you very much and happy Labor Day, everyone. Thank you. Have a great week. Coming up, if you like mysteries, see how pets play a key role in a popular mystery series. Stay tuned. You think that you're rescuing them, but honestly, they're going to end up rescuing you. You don't know what they've gone through. And they're not going to be perfect. And they are so happy that you are taking a chance on them to be a part of your family. I urge you to go down to your local shelters, pounds, dog rescues, foundations, you name it, and rescue a dog. Once you get your rescue dog, you should definitely order some Dinovite. Go online and order it. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. <laughs> Dinovite. It's awesome stuff. 90 days of Dynavite will make your dog a happy dog. It will help them with their overall health. You don't need to spend thousands on vet bills. Dynavite is the best thing that's ever happened to my dogs, you know, besides me, of course. <laughs> Call 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the Doggy Diva Show. Well, if you love a great mystery and you love stories with animals and great recipes, you are going to love the award-winning Cozy Mystery Series written by author Diane Harmon. And we are very honored to have her here with us today. Hey, Diane, welcome. 
Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I've been looking forward to this. Uh, so have we. Now, I love your books. I I have so many of your books, and the the characters are so well thought out. You incorporate animals into it, which is, of course, my dream, a great mystery and great animals. But you also incorporate recipes. Can you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? Because it's your background's diverse, and you also you, you have a whole way of writing that's so pleasing to animal lovers. And mystery lovers. Well, I love animals, obviously. I've had a very eclectic background. I was an antique and art appraiser for many years. Um, I had my own company, but the, the IRS hired me and a number of insurance companies. And they'd fly me to different places in the United States to uh, appraise different things. I had a staff um, of independent contractors because I certainly didn't know everything about everything. And then I became rather disenchanted with how people uh, define themselves by their stuff. So I uh, became the owner of a couple of yoga studios, which is about a 180, Mm -hmm. and uh, learned to stand on my head. And then my husband went into politics and decided that uh, having a picture of his wife standing on her head would not be appropriate. So uh, I became a political wolf, and then I became an author. So it's, I've been all over the board. Yeah, you have. You had like a diverse background, but I also think because you traveled all over the place, I have to tell you the settings for your all of your series it's like being there. You have a really great way of doing Thank it. You. Yeah, it's really, it's really, really Thank good. You. you always, I always feel like I'm right there with, uh, with the characters. Oh, I love to hear that because that's exactly what I've been trying to achieve. And I know a lot of people have written me that they enjoy the books because they get a sense of other places. And I really hadn't, that wasn't the reason I incorporated. It was just, I've been those places. So naturally they became a part of it. Yeah. And it's, and you have it like all over the place. It's not in, in one, you don't write your books all from one location. You do it from all different places, no, which is good. No. And it's good for the reader because you, you do, you take a there. Well, I've been very fortunate in that uh, I was in Cuba last year, so of course I had to write a book about that. Uh, you know, it, it kind of I just came back from British Columbia last week, and all the fires that are up yeah. there and the smoke and everything. And I'm not quite sure how that's going to be incorporated, but I rather imagine it will. <laughs> Well, you know, your series, which, I mean, you have quite a few uh, book series, and in the series you feature, you know, dogs throughout your book. What is your inspiration for using pets in your book? I mean, and personally for me, I love it. Well, I've been a, a pet lover all my life. I, had, I think maybe other than a month or two here and there, we've always had dogs in our family. One dog, two dogs, three dogs a number of different breeds, and uh, they just, they're part of the family, always have been. I can't imagine waking up every day without being licked. Exactly. Know, like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice way of putting it, but that's right, too. We all do that. Can you tell us a little bit about your pets? Like, who who do you have with you right now? At the moment, I have a boxer whose name is Kelly, and uh, she was named after Kelly's Coffee Shop, the first book in the series. Uh, I've had several boxers. I've had cockers, spaniels. Uh, My husband had a hunting dog that was a Brittany Spaniel. Uh, We've had Irish setters. Our first dog when we were married was a beagle, bachelor Mm beau. And uh, the day my husband was sworn in as an attorney, our neighbor sued us because the dog was baying and he was a fireman. So (laughs) unfortunately, we had to get rid of him and my husband would have lost his first book. (laughs) trials. So so, uh, we've always had them. And my uh, children are huge dog lovers. My daughter-in-law actually is on the board of the Humane Society in Seattle, and they have two rescue labs. So I'm a grandmom to two there. And I'm a new grandmother to an adorable, an adorable little bulldog puppy named Daisy. So they're they're a part of our life. And she is cute. (laughs) Oh, and bulldogs are, I mean, all the animals are cute, but I love the little face on the bulldogs. Yeah. I'm seriously considering that when I... (laughs) She's riding a skateboard at the moment, and she gets into the bottom of a hammock and sleeps. Oh, that's so <laughs> it's cute. Fun. It's that fun. Is, it's so it cute. Is cute. 
Now, <laughs> we talked about, you have so many series. Let's, we'll talk about the different series that you have. One of my favorite, of course, is the Cedar Bay uh, Cozy Mystery Series. And, and But I love all the characters in your books. Can you tell the listeners about the different series that you have? Well, uh, the first one in the Cozy Mystery Series was the Cedar Bay. And uh, that has been probably the most popular. People identify with Mike and Kelly. I think something interesting, Susan, that I did just by sheer, because I'm older, is the, the characters in my books, the main characters, are not 28, 30-year-olds, which is true. Uh, the average age in, of a protagonist, female, is 28, from, you know, the Danielle yeah. Steels and all of these. Uh, I, I'm past 28. I don't relate to that. So mine run into their late 40s, early 50s. And I've had a lot of readers say they really appreciate that, that uh, you've had some life experience by then. So that was my first series. And then my second one is the Liz Lucas series, which is set in Red Cedar, um, uh, uh, just outside of San Francisco, which allowed me to bring in San Francisco, and she's traveled to several places, Texas, etc. Uh, the High Desert series is set in outside of Palm Springs, California, and that came about because we live in Southern California and spent some time in that area. Um, I have a new series that is just really doing well, and it's the Northwest series. That was spawned mm -hmm. because my children live in Seattle, so I was up there a lot, and one thing led to another. So they're all different, but they all incorporate mystery, food, dogs, and recipes. That's kind of the common denominator. What was your inspiration to include, like, recipes in the book? I love to cook. I We've entertained always, and particularly my husband was in politics, and I had to come up with a lot of recipes that would be of interest to, you know, we had the governors and things like that at our home, and so it just came about naturally, and then I thought, well, why not put that in? Because uh, Diane Mott Davidson was uh, is an author that I have always enjoyed, and she's had recipes in her books, and I thought, well, why not? I've got plenty of recipes, and, you know, that just became a part of it. Well, it, it was kind of funny because the first book I read was Kelly's Coffee Shop, and you had some recipes, and then I get to the back of the book, <laughs> and you have the recipes. I was so excited. Uh, that makes me happy. Thank you. Uh, I've heard a lot of, of people who do use the recipes, which pleases me. And uh, I know other authors say it's a pain in the neck to write them down, to try them out, to make sure they work. And every recipe that's in my books, I have personally made. And many a time, uh, they're, they're changed. You know, something isn't just right. And so I've got to tweak it a bit. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, for me, I enjoy it. And I now I enjoy it because I have so many of your books looking at the recipes at the end as well because I know what to look well, for. thank you. Yeah. It's thank you. I, I'm still trying recipes. We still, we we had a new one last night with a stuffed mushroom with bacon in it that I'd never tried before. I thought, ooh, that mm. <laughs> that'll be there somewhere. Now, we'll talk about... Um, the the Cedar Bay Cozy Mystery. Let's talk about that series for a minute. Like, what was your inspiration for that? Because it's very animal oriented, and of course, the the most recent book, Trouble at the Animal Shelter, because Kelly's Coffee Shop kind of lays the groundwork, and then there's other books in between. And I, the, your most recent one is Trouble at the Animal Shelter. Uh, I, I wish I could tell you that a specific person, thing, or event. Uh, was the genesis of that book, and I can't, I have no idea. I was in um, Arizona with my husband and my uh, son and daughter-in-law, and I thought, I'd like to write a cozy mystery. I'd never tried one, and I thought, what would happen if I wrote one? And for some reason, Kelly's Coffee Shop came to mind, and when I got back, I started writing it, and of course, it had to have a dog. The dog in it uh, was Rebel, which was my dog at the time, my boxer dog, and um, it just kind of, I'm kind of a different writer in that a lot of writers, and I admire them, I wish I could do this, actually... Uh, plot out everything ahead of time, and they have outlines with each chapter. I have a sense of who's going to die, how they're going to die, and 
kind of some suspects in mind. And then I sit down and just start to write. And I, it sounds crazy, but I have to say the characters often tell me where the story is going to go uh, as I'm writing it. it it's kind of a, a work in progress that I'm reading a book as I'm writing it, if that makes any sense. There's a term in the industry called pantster for people like me. And, uh, you know, you, you write by the seat of your pants. Yeah. And that's, I, I've, I've tried to do the other with all these outlines and everything, and I feel like I'm just being strangled. Well, I think you know what? I think that's why they sound so authentic. And you had brought up earlier about your characters, and your characters are mature and they're very defined. And you know, for a lot of my listeners, we are in that bracket where some we appreciate something like this because it they have life experiences and it sort of plays out in all of your stories and. As you talk about the mystery, I mean, the mystery unfolds, and I'm a pretty avid mystery reader, That, but you get me at the end. I mean, you think it out very, very well. So however you're doing it, well, I wouldn't you. change. I wouldn't change what you're doing. <laughs> thank you. you know, it's interesting. Authors uh, moan and, and bewail when they get a bad review, and, and we've all had it. Anytime you, you put yourself out in public, you're going to. But I'll never forget. One of the first reviews I had on Kelly's Coffee Shop, and it was so valid. It was a bad review, and she was right on. She said, I like to read a mystery and try to figure out who done it. Because the person who done it in this one came in late, I didn't have the chance to do that. And I thought, you're right. I'll never make that mistake again. And so I have introduced all my characters more in the beginning, so the reader has the the chance to discover for themselves who did it. And I know I personally enjoy doing that when I'm reading a mystery. Who did it? Exactly. So it was it was very valuable to me. It really was. And and it's interesting when I start I. Met to write or to be an author. It just kind of happened. But I had read at one point Stephen King's book. Uh, I think it's called On Writing. He said, just do it. Well, I think we've all heard that if you're going to write a book, write what you know about. Well, I kept thinking all my life, I don't know anything. You know, <laughs> what would I write about? And And then when you get into it, there will be a little nugget that somebody said. There will be a thing from an antique appraisal I was on. There will be, you know, and, and so, yeah, your life experience does come into it. Unbidden, it just is part of it. And characters, the characters, while they're not replicas of people, uh, there, there certainly are elements of people I've met over the years. I don't think it could be otherwise, unless you're writing dystopian, which hasn't happened yet, or something like that. Yeah. Um, for me, it, it, you know, there, there certainly are nuggets of conversations, places, things, et cetera. Speaking of characters, do you have any favorite characters that you've, you know, come to really enjoy and love in your books? I love Kelly. <laughs> yep. I, 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 I like do too, Kelly actually. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I kind of. They have a great relationship. Yeah, they do. I, I could see I being friends with them. I, that's what I hear. I had one uh, woman writing and said she and her husband sit down at the table and say, well, what do you think Kelly and Mike would do with this? <laughs> Which I love. I just, uh, in my, my new The Northwest series, I just had a, a new release last week in it, uh, uh, Murder in Seattle. And I introduced a character that I came to love when I was writing him. And he's kind of a, a mafia person with a heart of gold. And interestingly enough, I just published it three or four days ago, and the first reviews have come in, and three of them said, I love Al's character. Please incorporate him in a book again. And I thought, well, okay, the readers are <laughs> making their wants known. How do I do this? And I like him. I really like him. No, and that's good so, because they can identify or they appreciate the character, you know, and you look forward I to so. seeing them again or what they're going to do, you know. 
Well, and also, everybody in life has multiple parts to their personality. Nobody's just good. Nobody's just bad. So if you bring in those other elements, I, I think there's something to that. My son was visiting here last week on some biz, on a business trip. He said, Mom, do you have a book that's at the same, you know, your very favorite? I said, no, it's like my children. I mean, how could you have one favorite? And he said, well, you know, I'm your favorite. <laughs> I think I've used that one before. I don't think your sister would enjoy hearing that. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Now, I have to ask you, speaking of your most recent books coming out, what book do you have out now? I always find that when I find a recent book that's come out, you know, I'm so glad that I have the rest in the series because it, even though they could do standalone, they could be standalone books. This series right. is so, so good because it's like you get to know the people and you get to, you know, sure. yeah. So do you it have any new ones? Out a bit, I think. Yeah. Uh, I had Murdered by Plastic Surgery came out about six weeks ago, and it was kind of interesting. My husband and I were in Palm Springs, and we were sitting in a little Mexican restaurant, and there was only one table happened to be in the bar, and there were four women sitting at the bar. And it was obvious they all had a lot of work done <laughs> and not really good work done. And as I was leaving, I said, wouldn't it be interesting if I wrote a book about a plastic surgeon and and the work wasn't perfect and <laughs> that was that became murder by plastic surgery and then the newest book is this murder in Seattle which takes place uh, and it's about um, a woman who was divorced in her late forties and uh, she's formed a new life she started her own catering company moved to Bainbridge Island and her sister's there and. Her sister is getting married, and uh, the sister's husband's uncle is a very wealthy mafia man, and he's found murdered at the reception. And, of course, the the brother-in-law becomes a suspect because he's the sole beneficiary of the large estate, so it goes from there. And uh, I like that one. Yeah, no, that sounds interesting. I'm going to have to get that. I just actually, just this week, I got um, the murder, the plastic surgery, uh, plastic surgery one. I just got that this week. So I'm going to, I'm going to be starting well, you know, that this weekend. I, I've been married a long time. My husband always reads my books and he you know, said, where did you get the idea for that? And I said, I don't know. The muse visits me in the middle of the night. What can I tell you? <laughs> well, I'm going to have to get murder in Seattle. But one thing I want to let you know, too, is your female characters are independent. They're strong. They're usually coming into their own in, you know, a change of life business or something that's changed their lives but it sort of is like showing that even if you're at a certain age or you're doing something things opportunities can still open up for you whether they be business personal things such as that so i like the way you write that way also because it's Thank um you. yeah i love the the characters i, I feel have. strongly that the life is never not over. Uh, I didn't start writing until I was quite late in life. So uh, usually when you turn 50, 55 people, oh, it's over. You know, that's it. No yeah. more to do. Well, I had a whole new career, you know. <laughs> You're <laughs> living proof. I, think it, I am. And I think it, it just, you know, don't say no. Don't say you can't do it. And I guess that's what I try to imbue my characters with that, it's not over just because there is a death or a divorce or, you know, children leave, things happen, empty nest. Uh, there's a, a chance one door closes and a new one opens, so go for it. And I, I guess that's come across, mm -hmm, and I, I strongly believe in that, no matter male or female. And in today's world, people don't stay in one role their whole life, usually. It's, it's quite different, whether it's employment or... Certainly with multiple marriages and things like that, it, it shifted mm -hmm. tremendously. Yeah. And I think that if you're going to write contemporaneously, you have to reflect those shifts. Well, and you do that very well. Where can the listeners go to learn more about you, to learn more about your books? What's the newest one coming up? Well, um, I have a website, www.dianeharmon.com, 
and they're welcome to go there. As a matter of fact, if you go there and sign up for my newsletter, uh, you can get a couple of free books. Plus, I, I send out a weekly newsletter to everyone on my list, and that always has the newest books. Plus, I, I usually have two books a week that I put on sale for 99 cents, where my books normally run two ninety nine or three ninety nine. I like anybody else, I like a bargain. So why not let my listeners kind of fill in some blanks? And uh, I think they appreciate it. So that's always in there. And I also like to let them know about other authors I like that are in the, this genre. Uh, there's plenty of them out there. And unless someone tells you about it, you don't know. I had a woman the other day uh, tell me she had just read one of my books about antiques, and she had no, it was the first book in my desert series about uh, Murder in the Monkey Band, which is about a mice, and, which is a China company in Germany, and filling in a set and everything. She said when she read it, she'd never heard of what mice was. And she said, interestingly enough, she was at a museum on the East Coast, and there were some mice <laughs> I know about that. That's pretty exciting. That's so funny. <laughs> that you must have a lot of life experiences because going through them, it's it you incorporate things that, that people kind of learn, such as myself. I mean, I've well, got yeah, I think I have a couple of books at least in each of your series. And I'm on your newsletter uh distribution, so I love getting your newsletter. Yeah. Well, I, I think that I personally like to learn about something when I'm reading. If they put in something I don't know anything about, I love it because I've learned something. And so I don't consciously do it. I think it just, it kind of comes up. Uh, there is a, uh, a a law that went in recently, uh, and it was mainly for military men and, you know, the wives of them, that they could donate their sperm to a sperm bank, and in the event they were killed uh, while they were, on active duty, the their wife could have their child after they had died, and mm. the child would be allowed to all of the military benefits insurance. Well, the law didn't limit it just to military. So I'm writing a book now about someone who has an octogenarian gentleman friend who dies and naturally, the you know his first children, two children, would have split the estate. But gee, here comes more children. Wow! And I was going to ask you what your what book is coming up. What do you have for us to look forward to? Now that's a story. <laughs> that I, I think that could be. I'm, I'm still doing that one. Uh, I have murdered uh, by wine that I'm doing the final edits on my. Daughter-in-law is a wine scholar. She teaches wine and everything. And we were in Sonoma recently and at a private tour there. And the tour guide said, you know, every year somebody falls in a wine vat and dies. Oh, my gosh. And I said, seriously? <laughs> who would ever think of that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who would think of that? But there's a book. I know? say, so. that's, that's interesting. <laughs> Death by wine. Yeah. No, and so people always say, well, where do your ideas come from? Are you kidding? There's just look around you, you know. <laughs> I was at the grocery store the other day about 7.30 in the morning, and there was a young woman in front of me, and she had a child, a baby on one hip and another child in the, the uh, cart. And it was 7.30 or 8 in the morning. The only thing in her basket was a case of beer. And I thought, now there's a story. There's a story. <laughs> it's a, I mean, it is. Whether it's, it's for her or... Uh, I mean, it, so they're all around you. It, it, the challenge is to live long enough to write them all. <laughs> and and you've written so many of them. So now, I'm glad that I have more to look forward to. <laughs> and it Thank sounds you. like the topics are going to be very interesting. So Well, I, I think they're different and they're real. I mean, yes. it's valid. It's not a figment of my imagination. No. This is there. So what, what if? What, but murder by wine. You know, I, I think uh, my husband turned on what a way to go. You know? <laughs> I, just, I was just going to say that. He took my line from me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Well, Diane, it has been so great having you on the show. I love, love, love your books. I love all your characters. Oh, thank you, I love Susan. the recipes. Thank you. I look forward. Hopefully, we'll have you back on because you, you have such great stories coming out. I think that it would be great to have you back on. And also, I wanted to let you let all of the listeners know 
my little co-host, Miss Olive over here, has chosen Diane to be one of her favorite things in the Miss Olive's favorite oh, things. Seven- yes, yeah, so it'll be in Suncoast Pet Magazine in the uh, September October issue. So you'll get to learn more about Diane and her great books. Well, thank you, and please let me know where I can get it so I can read it. I, I will. Like I will to have it. I'll get it sent to you. I'll send, send you a copy. Absolutely. And I'll certainly put it in my newsletter and let other ones know about that. So thank you very, very much for having me. It's been fun. I've enjoyed talking to you after the emails. I know. It's fun. It is. And I'm so glad I got to have you on because I love what you're doing and I love I love the characters, but especially thank you. in the Cedar Bay. I feel like I could live there and just like blend in there. So. Well, a lot of my books take place on the ocean because. I love the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. But thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for being a guest on our show. And I will make sure that I get that to you, the magazine. And it's going to be online, too. So I'll get all the information to you. Perfect. And thank you again. And thank you for all you do. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Okay. We'll be back Bye-bye. in just a moment. Hi, Doggy Diva Show listeners. Susan Marie here to take just a half a minute to let you know how much we appreciate your being with us every week to hear great dog tips you can use with your pet, some great stories about rescues, fostering, and some heartwarming stories about second chances for pets who are now in loving forever homes. Be sure to go to our website, thedoggydiva.com, to see pictures of Miss Olive and other dogs we talk about on the show and get to know us a little better. That's thedoggydiva.com, D-O-G-G-Y. We appreciate your feedback, too. Okay, let's get back to the show. Coming up, recognizing working dogs on Labor Day. Stay with us. Molly, here's your dinner. (coughs) Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your Cat Tree Tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back, and we're here today with Kim Gablin, Senior Marketing Director at Bill Jack Foods. Hey, Kim, how are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you doing? Very good, and I know that this is an important weekend, and we're going to be talking about uh, Labor Day and working dogs. So can you tell us a little bit about what a working dog is? Yeah, sure. You know, we always think about our, you know, our pet's as our best friends, right? They're, they're kind of our, our companions. They hang around with us. But there are also a lot of dogs out there that actually there are more than a pet, right? They're, they actually learn and perform tasks to help or entertain uh, their humans. Absolutely. And, and can you tell us about a few working dogs and what they do? Yeah, you know, there's, there's quite a few actually categories of working dogs. You know, for example, one that people really probably know and recognize immediately are service dogs. Yeah. And a service dog is, you know, defined by the Americans with Disabilities Act as a dog that individually is trained to do work or perform tasks for people with a disability. So there's very specific kinds of um, different kinds of service dogs. So, for example, there's guide dogs, and guide dogs help people who are blind. Yes. You know, or, or the hearing dogs or mobility dogs who help uh, people who can't hear, so they need signals or they help someone know that there's something dangerous in the area, or they might help them get around in, with mobility, for example. I know with PTSD and with the number of things that are going on out there, dogs serve as, as emotional dogs too, as emotional therapy dogs, and there's a lot of work going on out there. So this, this Labor Day, we really do celebrate the working dogs. 
Yeah, well, and you know, there's a, to your point, there's actually psychiatric dogs and medical alert dogs, right, who help with, yeah. like you said, PTSD or, um, for example, seizures or heart attacks. Um, dogs can sometimes be trained to know when that's going to happen and then be able to put that person in a safe position when that event happens so that they can kind of alert somebody as well. So, yeah, so it's really, it's really great. And then, of course, you know, there's all kinds of uh, military and police dogs, right? There are, you know, guide dogs in the military and police, but then there are also a lot of detection dogs that they can be looking for drugs or for explosives. Um, they might even look for plants, you know, um, like for in customs, for example. Mm-hmm. Or, um, you know, I, I also understand that there are dogs that even um, can d- detect termites or even bed bugs. <laughs> wow. Isn't it amazing that, right? though what they what the dogs can do? I mean, you know, we we love them as our pets, but they're so smart, and they so many of them, and so many of them are sitting in shelters and rescues waiting to be adopted. And these are the dogs that are being trained to do a lot of uh, a lot of this uh, this work. Right, right. Well, and I think you know, there's therapy dogs, and um, and I'm sure you've talked to some people who have therapy dogs. Yes. And, and you know, therapy dogs are really great because they are actually trained and certified to be a therapy dog, and then they are often used to visit places like hospitals or nursing homes or schools or even, you know, places where maybe a disaster has struck to be able to help, you know, kind of calm and uh, connect with people who might not be feeling well or might be feeling very stressed because of the situation. And so, you know, there's there's really a lot of therapy dogs out there. I know that AKC has a therapy dog program where you can actually get your dog trained in that program. And then depending on what kind of therapy situation you want to, you know, you want to be able to help with, you could then get certified specifically for the kind of you know, therapy place you're going to go, if you're going to go to a hospital or to a nursing home, a lot of times hospitals then can tell you these are the organizations we work with to make sure you're certified and then you can register with them and you can actually be able to help. So you don't have to have some, you know, some super trained, very specific dog necessarily to be able to do that, but you do need to have some training and certification to have a therapy dog. Well, and I'm so glad you brought that up because I believe that they're so important in our society, like the hospitals, the nursing homes, and I understand that they're even allowing them in some courtrooms now to help as therapy dogs. So, I mean, they're re- they really play an important part in our society, and I'm so glad that it's being recognized, and thank you for bringing that up, too. Yeah, well, and I think, you know, we we all know how much we just, I mean, when I sit and pat my dog, I, it's so stress-relieving. It's just so calming. It, I mean, they've, they've proven that it kind of slows your heart rate down and kind of calms you. And so it's really interesting because I think that, you know, those if you're in a hospital or in a nursing home, you don't, don't always get the exposure to that. And so the fact that um, you can bring a dog in and, and have them connect with people, it's, it's really, great, really great work that people do when they have a therapy dog and they're using it to help people feel better. Yes, you know. Our hats are off to them and hats off to their dogs. I mean, that's that's just a wonderful. And speaking of wonderful, in order for the dogs to be going out there and doing everything they do, they need proper nutrition and activity. Can you give us some tips on that? Yeah. You know, I, you know we always talk about, you know, your food choice, you know, your, your dry dog you know, dog food choice that you make is really important because it's kind of the basis of everything that you're, all the nutrients and everything that your dog gets. So it's important to be able to pick a food that your dog likes to eat, uh, pick a food that has a a good protein source as its first ingredient. You know, for example, we use chicken. So in our adult select food, we use 25 pounds of fresh chicken to make a 30 pound bag of dog food. And we really feel like that fresh chicken is important. And then we cook it really slowly and, uh, and then that helps it to be able to uh, protect the nutrients that are in it from all that chicken, and then that helps the dog get the daily nutrients that they need uh, every day. So, you know, having a good food choice is really important, and, and I think, you know, making time for play. You know, um, I uh, I never get to play enough with my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. And so I'm sure most people are like that, right? Life gets in the way, right, too? Exactly. Yeah, so, so, so it's always really important to make time for play, right? Even if it's just a nice 20-minute walk, or, you know, just playing a little bit in the backyard or even just playing in the house, right? Even if you don't have to be outside to be able to do that, it's just throwing the ball, fetching. It's good to be able to stay active and keep their mind active. It could be, you know, something like running around and fetching, but it also could be hiding some treats or using one of those puzzle balls to be able to kind of get 
um, get your dog kind of active and thinking about um, thinking about just playing and having some fun and using all their senses. Exactly, and it it and not only keeps them alert, keeps them uh, busy, and it also keeps their mind active, like you said. And that way, let's just say if you do that before you go to work in the morning, spend some time with them and kind of get their you know their mind activated, get a lot of things out. I find that mine go take a nap after I do things, you know, some <laughs> some simple things with them. They like go, okay, that was like really cool. I'm gonna go rest now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they, they need to get that energy out. Right? Mm-hmm. And, like, and then when they do, they're like, okay, now I'm ready to just take it easy and, and have a good day. And, and what a great day for you, you know, great way for you both to start the day. Exactly. You know, to have some, some time together and some fun. And then, you know, everybody can kind of go off and do what they need to do that day. And, and then, you know, hopefully then get back together in the afternoon when you get home and you're spend a few more, you know, a little bit more time together. So that's always nice. Absolutely. And we were talking, you brought up about the treats. And of course, you know that we love the Bill Jack treats. Um, can you tell us about the Bill Jack treats and about Bill Jack dog food? Yeah, you know, we have a, just a whole line of treats that are great for, you know, for anywhere from puppies that are learning how to you know, do tricks or, you know, for uh, older dogs as well. They're different sizes and different flavors. So there's little Jack treats, which are great for training. Mm-hmm. They're a little bit on the smaller side. They're also great for small dogs. Uh, and so are our breakfast jacks. They're on the smaller side and are great for training too. Uh, but all of our all of our treats are soft, and you can break them off. We have a gooberlicious treat that's peanut butter flavored. So if you have any peanut allergies in your house, you don't you know you can use a peanut flavoring, and then you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so we have a lot of different kinds of uh, varieties of treats to kind of keep it interesting and exciting. You know, when you're when you're treating them, and also when um, you're training them. Exactly. And those, and I love those little treats because they fit perfectly in my little treat bag. So I, I my little, the one I wear, you wear around your waist. I love that. I, I love- a lot of times the low jacks also fit really great in some of those puzzle balls that I was talking yes. about. So, you know, they're just small enough to pop in there, but then they at least fall out when your dog rolls them around. Yeah, and they're nice and soft so they can chew on them. That, and I know Olive, just she loves them because for her I have to break everything up, and they're a nice size so I could just like break it in half, and she just she loves them. For those who may not have heard before, um, can you tell people about Bill Jack and its history? Yeah, you know, it's our 70-year anniversary this year. Wow. We're, you know, we're very excited, and so that's, it's really kind of exciting. And Bill and Jack started the company in 47, and so that, that was right after they got out of the war, and, well, out of the, uh, out of the uh, Army, and so uh, right after the war. And it, it, they have really, really wanted to be able to make food that was for dogs that would help them thrive. And so they really kind of learned about animal protein and how meat protein, like chicken, is really great for dogs and is really healthy for them because it gives them all the amino acids that they have and so that they need. So it's really great because they they kind of created this food and then they, they, they've they been going on strong since then. And so we have a lot of people who love our food and because of, as I was saying earlier, because we use so much fresh chicken because we cook it slowly, um, we really have a lot of great feedback from people about how easy it is on their dog's digestive system, you know, how they uh, really see the difference in the skin and coat because it really, you know, nutrition works from the inside out. And so the, the skin and coat is always the last thing to get any kind of nutrients. And so when you've got a dog that's looking fantastic with a great skin and coat, you know that they're getting all the things they need to actually nourish that skin and coat. For people who want to learn more about Bill Jack, the history of it, or just learn more about what you have available, where can they go? Yeah, you know, I always recommend that you start out at our website, which is at uh, BillJack.com. It's B I L dash J A C dot com, and we've got all of our formulas there. All of our, um, and we just have a couple of new formulas too. We just came out with a picky no more dry dog food, which is great for dogs that are picky. So you can start there and learn a little bit more about us. You can also sign up for our um, monthly email, and we usually have coupon offers that you can sign up for in there. And lots of tips, you know, dog tips about how to take care of your dog and how, you know, have some fun over the summer, you know, those kinds of things. Um, but we're also out on, on social media, too. We're on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest. And then we've got some really great training videos with Joel Silverman, who's a longtime yeah. Hollywood dog trainer. He's a great person to be able to talk to um, or to be able to see uh, some different kinds of videos. You know, they're only a couple minutes long, and you can kind of get some good basic training tips, and then you can train your dog to to kiss you on command or to walk backwards or to uh, sit or stay. That is so great because it is true. And he has those great little videos that just like 
give you what you need to know. You know, it's not you're not invested for hours sitting watching anything. It's he's and he's so good at what he does. He's like the master. Oh yeah, he's he's so he's so sweet. He's so gentle. He's got great easy tips. So he's really fun and easy to watch. He is, and one of my favorite things too is the Best Friends Club. Could you just tell us a little bit about the Best Friends Club? Yeah, you know, our Best Friends Club is our monthly email newsletter, and we send it out once, about once a month, usually around mid-month, and we um, we try to give people information about taking care of their dog, about nutrition, uh, our new products that we just recently came out with. We, you know, we usually do stories in there about our new products. Sometimes we even have some extra coupons for those specific new products. So we really try to kind of... Um, help people be able to have just, you know, a, help, a healthy, long-lasting relationship with their dog. And so anything that has to do with that, we try to do a couple of articles each month to, to do that. And we also try to include those a couple offers for coupons that you can sign up for in there as well. And I am a definite coupon girl. I use the coupons that you guys <laughs> send all the time. Well, Kim, thank you so much. Happy Labor Day. Thank you for bringing all this great information to us. And we look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you. Happy Labor Day. And thank you to all those dogs out there, those working dogs out there that make life better for all of us people out there. Yes. Thank you. We would like to thank our guests this week. And also, as our doggy divas always say, please love your pets because they love you unconditionally. And please remember to adopt, foster, spay, neuter, and microchip. And as always, please have a great diva week, everyone. That's all for this episode of The Doggy Diva Show. To find out more, go to our website, thedoggydiva.com. Also, find us on our Facebook page, The Doggy Diva Show, and tell your fellow dog lovers about it. Don't miss Susan Marie, Miss Olive, and The Doggy Divas right here for the next episode. See you again soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.